Look at all of you. Look at all of you. Goodness. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, giving all praise and honor to God for bringing us together here today. Thank you so much. I am, I am so grateful to see all of you. <laughs> you guys are still 10 back there. Let me, let me begin by saying thanks to all of you who've traveled from far and wide to brave the cold today. I know it's a little chilly. But I'm fired up. But we all made this journey for a reason. It's humbling to see a crowd like this, but in my heart I know you didn't just come here for me. You, you know. <laughs> you came here because you believe in what this country can be. In the face of war, you believe there can be peace. In the face of despair, you believe there can be hope. In the face of a politics that shut you out, that's told you to settle, that's divided us for too long, you believe that we can be one people, reaching out for what's possible, building that more perfect union. <clears throat> that's the journey we're on today. But let me tell you how I came to be here. As most of you know, I'm not a native of this great state. I, <laughs> I moved to Illinois over two decades ago. I was a young man then, just a year out of college. I knew no one in Chicago when I arrived with, was without money or family connections. But a group of churches had offered me a job as a community organizer for the grand sum of $13,000 a year. And I accepted the job sight unseen, motivated then by a single, simple, powerful idea that I might play a small part in building a better America. My work took me to some of Chicago's poorest neighborhoods. I joined with pastors and lay people to deal with communities that had been ravaged by plant closings. I saw that the problems people faced weren't simply local in nature, that the decisions to close a steel mill was made by distant executives, that the lack of textbooks and computers in a school could be traced to skewed priorities of politicians a thousand miles away, and that when a child turns to violence, I came to realize that there's a hole in that boy's heart that no government alone can fill. It was in these neighborhoods that I received the best education that I ever had, and where I learned the meaning of my Christian faith. After three years of this work, I went to law school because I wanted to understand how the law should work for those in need. I became a civil rights lawyer and taught constitutional law. And after a time, I came to understand that our cherished rights of liberty and equality depend on the active participation of an awakened electorate. It was with these ideas in mind that I arrived in this capital city as a state senator. It, it was here in Springfield where I saw all that is America converge, farmers and teachers, businessmen and laborers, all of them with a story to tell, all of them seeking a seat at the table, all of them clamoring to be heard. I made lasting friendships here, friends that I see in the audience here today. It was here, it was here where we learned to disagree without being disagreeable. That it's possible to compromise so long as you know those principles that can never be compromised. And that so long as we're willing to listen to each other, we can assume the best in people instead of the worst. It's why we were able to reform a death penalty system that was broken. That's why we were able to give health insurance to children in need. 
That's why we made the tax system in, right here in Springfield more fair and just for working families. And that's why we passed ethics reform that the cynics said could never, ever be passed. It was here in Springfield where North, South, East, and West come together that I was reminded of the essential decency of the American people, where I came to believe that through this decency, we can build a more hopeful America. And that is why, in the shadow of the old state capitol, where Lincoln once called on a house divided to stand together, where common hopes and common dreams still live, I stand before you today to announce my candidacy for President of the United States of America. Now listen, I, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Look, I, I, I recognize that there is a certain presumptuousness in this, a certain audacity to this announcement. I know that I haven't spent a lot of time learning the ways of Washington. But I've been there long enough to know that the ways of Washington must change. The genius of our founders is that they designed a system of government that can be changed. And we should take heart because we've changed this country before. In the face of tyranny, a band of patriots brought an empire to its knees. In the face of secession, we unified a nation and set the captives free. In the face of depression, we put people back to work and lifted millions out of poverty. We welcomed immigrants to our shores. We opened railroads to the west. We landed a man on the moon, and we heard a king's call to let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. We've done this before. Each and every time a new generation has risen up and done what's needed to be done. Today we are called once more, and it is time for our generation to answer that call. For that is our unyielding faith, that it, in the face of impossible odds, people who love their country can change it. That's what Abraham Lincoln understood. He had his doubts. He had his defeats. He had his skeptics. He had his setbacks. But through his will and his words, he moved a nation and helped free a people. It's because of the millions who rallied to his cause that we're no longer divided, north and south, slave and free. It's because men and women of every race, from every walk of life, continued to march for freedom long after Lincoln was laid to rest, that today we have the chance to face the challenges of this millennium together as one people, as Americans. All of us know what those challenges are today. A war with no end, a dependence on oil that threatens our future, schools where too many children aren't learning, and families struggling paycheck to paycheck despite working as hard as they can. We know the challenges. We've heard them. We've talked about them for years. 